This is everything I need for a five-day backpacking trip in Glacier National Park. I'm gonna go over every item individually and talk about each one, show you what I got. All right, so next week, me and two of my dad buddies are meeting in Montana. And we're gonna hike the Northern Loop in Glacier National Park. Uh, it's about a 50 mile loop. We're gonna do it in five days and four nights. So it's a little bit of an aggressive uh, mileage and elevation gain for us, I think. Um, so we got some days, you know, 12, 14 mile days with uh, some like 3,500 feet of elevation gain and loss in the same day. So quite, quite a endeavor for us, uh, you know, 40 plus year olds. But I think we're, we're, we're gonna give it our best. But it's gonna be great and I can't wait to get there. And so wanted to share with you all the stuff that I'm bringing on this trip. Uh, I'm trying to keep this kit as light as possible without sacrificing too much comfort. So this is a lightweight setup. This is uh, my base weight is right under 15 pounds. And so I wanna go through all this and share it with you, show you what I got. I'm gonna go through my, uh, I'm gonna show you my backpack and then my big three first. And then I'm actually gonna set up the big three so you can watch me in a hyperlapse, uh, set those up. I'm actually gonna try them out here first uh, before I go, which is always recommended to do. So I'm gonna demonstrate that here too. All right, so the backpack. We've got the REI Flash 55, and this is the older model. I got this uh, three or four years ago, and they have a newer model now, um, which looks about the same with just a little bit of a, improvements to it, but this has been a workhorse, and it's, it's a great pack. I highly recommend this pack. It weighs in just over two pounds, and it is very comfortable, very supportive. It's got this great foam. Uh, backing with these air channels. The hip pads are super comfortable uh, and you can carry quite a load in this. I'll, I'll put it on the screen on how high you can go, but um, it's a 55 liter pack, so you can you can pack quite a load in here, clearly, even though it's a, uh, it's a very lightweight pack compared to some of those other ultralight packs on the market. All right, so my big three, I've got the Nemo, the Nemo Hornet, one person, ultralight backpacking tent. So. This one is, this has been great. I've loved this tent. So I'll set this one up here in just a second so you can see. This one has a cool um, design where you can actually like split out the packaging so that you could store the tent stakes and the tent poles separately. And then you can really pack down the tent and then cinch down right here so that it's only this much um, showing when you really stuff it down. You can tie it off right there and get a, a much more compact uh, storage in your backpack. All right, so let's go ahead and set this thing up and then I'll get to the other two of the big three. All right, that was easy. So I highly recommend setting up your scent ahead of time and trying out your kit before you get on the trail. For one, you wanna make sure that it's still clean, that you got it cleaned from the last time you used it. So it's nice when you get out there again. You wanna make sure you have the right amount of tent stakes to go with it. I made the mistake one time of loaning a tent to a friend on a backpacking trip, one that I'd used many times, and we didn't set it up ahead of time and got out there in the backcountry and realized we didn't have the stakes for it. And it was a pup tent that required stakes for the setup, so. Uh, we were, you know, doing whatever we could with sticks and rocks to try to make it stand up, but it was not pretty. Another reason why uh, I'm setting it up here is because I have not uh, tried this big three out together yet. Before I get out there, I want to actually just put it all in there and make sure it fits nice and that it's going to be good to go. So moving on in big three, uh, my sleeping bag, this is the new part for me, is the REI Helix insulated pad. Uh, this is the regular wide, R value 4.9, weighs one pound, nine ounces. And that's without the the baggy pad also comes with this uh, blow bag, air sack, air bellows, what do you call it? <laughs> um, but I'm gonna be leaving this at home and I'll show you why here in a minute, but take those things out, saves you a couple ounces. It comes with this nice little strap around it. So it's perfect to be able to pack in your bag that way. So, so let's go ahead and throw this thing in the tent and see how it fits. 
And I'm gonna use my little flex tail gear tiny pump. Just makes blowing up the pad so much easier. Uh, and particularly deflating in the morning makes it so much quicker and easier rather than having to get all the little corners of air out of the pad. All right, that took about a minute to inflate with the tiny pump and this thing just looks comfortable again with the trying it out ahead of time it's always good to check out your pad make sure there's no leaks in it if it's brand new you're probably pretty safe but you never know when there might be a defect or if you've taken it out and you had a pinhole leak that you weren't aware of it would suck to find that out in the backcountry let's throw it in the tent and uh, see how it fits I like a glove. All right, this puppy fits great in here. So on to number three from the big three. Uh, I've got my Marmot Trestles Elite Eco 20 degree long bag and it weighs 2.9 ounces. Mm. This thing is super comfy and roomy. I've been super happy with this thing, lightweight and Comfortable bringing the 20, 20 degree bag because again, this has a 4.9 value, R value on the sleeping pad. And you know, we might get some nights like around freezing, but it's probably supposed to be maybe lows in the in the 30s. So the R value of that pad compared compared to this 20 degree bag, I don't think I'll need anything cooler than that. So pretty comfortable with that combo. So I'll throw this in here and see how this looks. It's a thing of beauty. Come on over here and take a look. So as you can see, there's not a lot of room for gear inside there. There's some pockets uh, where you can stuff things uh, like your flashlight or whatever, but um, this tent does have a pretty good vestibule on it once you put the rainfly on. So there's definitely room for gear once you Put the rain fly on also this tent has these cool little guy outs right here which attach to the rain fly and when you put those in from both sides it really opens up the tent and makes it feel much roomier than it looks at the moment all right seems like that's gonna work uh hey before we go any further uh if this is helpful or uh entertaining whatsoever uh, would you mind hitting the like button down below it would really help me out and I appreciate it. Let's get back to the loadout. All right, so that's the big three. Now I'll just work my way across the table with no particular order and, and talk about each item. I already started talking about the Flextail Tidy Pump. I definitely recommend getting one of these. It also doubles as a, if I could do it right, it also doubles as a lantern. There's three different brightnesses with a hanging, hanging loop so you can hang it in the tent at night, um, which is just kind of a nice bonus and it's a USB-C rechargeable. Another thing I didn't know about these is that they come with all these different attachments. So definitely take a look at them ahead of time and figure out which ones you're gonna need on your trip. Again, helps with uh, setting it up in advance. You know which items you're gonna need because you won't need all of these uh, on every trip. Right, right here, I've got uh, what some might consider a luxury item, but these are my camp shoes, camp sandals. Uh, I highly recommend bringing some shoes that you can slip into at the end of the day. That way your feet can get dried out. They can have a breast from being in the hiking boots. Uh, it's gonna help with your foot care and just be more comfortable when you're at camp. I see a lot of people bringing Crocs and Chacos and things like that. Those can weigh over a full pound easy. And so that weight can really uh, stack up on you. And I also see people like tying them onto the back of their backpack. And that's just gonna add like a pound that's flopping around on the backpack there. It's not gonna be very comfortable. So. I uh, definitely recommend finding some small, lightweight slip-ons that you can find. I got these at Old Navy. I think they were $6. <laughs> and I think they weigh a whole six ounces. And these, whoops, yeah, six and a half ounces for the pair of them. So uh, that's definitely worth their weight. I like buying these one liter bottles. It doesn't matter what brand. I always just grab whatever's at the gas station, but 
get them ahead of time so you know that you've got them. These are one liter each, even though they're different sizes. And I like buying the smaller bottles that have the little sport cap on them. It was just super easy to use, easy to pull out, take a drink and pop it back in. Uh, usually the one liter ones come with just the flat screw cap. And so you gotta buy the smaller bottle and then switch out the caps. Another luxury item for me is to bring myself a little whiskey nightcap. And so I use one of these, I, I reuse one of these 375 milliliter uh, liquor bottles that I have just repurposed. And so just refill this thing up and this thing is super lightweight, just a couple ounces, not even. And uh, that way I can enjoy the scene at night before I go to bed, have a little sip of whiskey. All right, next up is my cook kit. And so in this, on this trip, we're doing things a little different because the between the three of us, we are gonna be sharing a jet boil and then bringing this as a backup. So I've got my Tokes Titanium 550 mil cup and this thing is ultra lightweight. And then paired with the BRS stove, we've got a backup to boil water on. Not planning on doing any actual cooking in this trip. It's mostly gonna be just boiling water for coffee, oatmeal, and dehydrated meals. One jet boil between the three of us should be sufficient. Definitely recommend like working with the group that you're going with to make sure that you guys aren't doubling up. The last time the three of us went in the Grand Tetons, all three of us brought a jet boil. And once we got there, we realized how unnecessary that really is that we were all carrying our own jet boils. Definitely check with your hiking partners and see what they're bringing and what you guys can double up on. Still bring a backup in case it fails. You know, you don't want to all be relying on one particular piece of gear item, but this is a super lightweight backup where the BRS stove com combined with the titanium pot, we've got a three and a half ounce backup solution and it serves double duty. So I can use this to drink my coffee or eat my oatmeal out of. All right, moving right along. I have the Osprey pack rain covers. This just goes right over the backpack. So in case it does rain, I definitely prefer to use one of these versus using one of those like backpacking ponchos that goes over your backpack. It's not very comfortable. You'll look like hunchback at Notre Dame walking around. Those things are just big and bulky and heavy. So these things are pretty nice. Although don't rely on this solely to keep your kit warm. I mean, don't rely on this solely to keep your kit dry inside your bag. I also bring a garbage bag where I will put the items that I need to keep dry in the backpack, such as my sleeping bag and my spare clothes and whatnot. Stick that inside the bag so it just doubles up on the rain protection should you need it. This is my poop kit. And if you wanna see uh, what I got in my poop kit, I've got another video right up here. I'll, I'll put the card up there uh, where I go into detail about the items in here, but there's a, a few hacks for you I can definitely recommend uh, for what you wanna put in your, in your poop kit. Next, I got my Garmin Enrage Mini. And this thing is, I definitely recommend this model. Uh, I like this a lot. The size is, I think the smallest you can get as far as the satellite communicators go. Uh, one, one word of advice on this I have is to, uh, they always recommend super durable. Just throw them around, no problems whatsoever. No, but seriously, ch test it before you go. Uh, send a text to whoever you're planning on communicating with, with this ahead of time. Um, send an actual text, not just the text text they offer. They offer a, you know, you can text Garmin and they'll give you an automated reply to let you know that it's working. But I had a trip where I tested it that way and then ended up trying to send a text to my wife, which did not go through and found out that I needed to have a firmware update on this device before the text to her would go through. So highly recommend actually testing an actual test to the person who you want to communicate with before you actually leave your home. I like to carry a knife with me and I just bring a Cheapo Depot uh, super lightweight knife. And yes, it is pink. Uh, I like finding ones that are bright colors because if it does fall off or you know you set it on a log at lunch or something like that and you forget to put it back on, it's really easy to spot. It's easy to see that you're leaving it behind or that it fell off your pack when you bent over or what have you. Um, and I like the kind that has a serrated edge on it. This one I, I chose too because it's again very lightweight. You can link to one on Amazon but less than two ounces. Definitely worth having that around. On a day-to-day -day basis I, I carry this Leatherman Skeletool around but in the backcountry you're just not going to use the screwdrivers and the pliers and all that stuff. Uh, it's just not necessary. So leave that at home. 
get you just a super lightweight basic pocket knife. For my headlamp, I've got the Nightcore. This is the older version of the Nightcore headlamp, uh, the NU20. And so this thing has been super reliable though, and I think it's an ounce heavier than the newer model, and I just haven't upgraded yet. Uh, it's probably because they switched to the those thin elastic bands. I actually prefer the thickness of this band, and it's much more comfortable to wear. So especially if you're gonna be wearing a headband very much at night, uh, I think that this is more comfortable than the little strings. All right, another new item that we're trying out on this trip is, this is the Fire Maple Gas Lantern. Uh, we are definitely already in the fire ban season here in the West. And so this thing can attach to any isobutane propane canister and it will give you the feeling of sitting around a campfire so when you can't have fires in the west then this thing is pretty nice to be able to you know just light this up I'll give it you a give you an example here quite a significant flame here uh, they say you want to have that flame like right at the top and you know doesn't look like much during the daylight, I'm sure, but uh, it definitely, it gives you that feeling of uh, and glow of sitting around a campfire. And so when you kind of miss that, if you want to be able to ha hang out with your friends or your family, uh, this kind of gives you that effect and for a minimal amount of weight. So my buddy and I agreed that uh, I, would, I would carry the lantern if he would carry the extra canister for it. And so that way we can enjoy a little firelight at night while we're sipping on our whiskey thing let's see what it weighs six and a half ounces with the canister about another six so between us you know 12 ounces to me seems worth it this is the canister uh, i'll be bringing with me and i will not be carrying this specific one because i'll be flying to montana and i have to pick them up there you cannot fly with these unfortunately so we'll have to pick that up when we arrive, but this is the size. And I definitely recommend this brand, Snow Peak Giga Power, for this size canister. It's kind of nice because they're actually four ounce canisters. So usually this size is three and a half ounce. That's kind of the standard, but this brand is designed to do better in cold weather for one. And two, you get just a little bit more fuel out of carrying about the same size can uh, rather than the a three and a half ounce without having to upgrade to a, a larger can. So that's kind of nice. And speaking of not being able to carry things on the airplane, uh, we'll be carrying bear spray. We'll be in grizzly country, obviously up in Montana. And so uh, this is from a previous trip. And uh, so we, we will be carrying two cans of bear spray between the three of us. I think that's sufficient. So that way somebody always has one and if they have to go off and you know go to the bathroom or whatever. And then that way somebody in the group already has, always has one. They don't have to worry about one person going off alone without one or not. Same thing, you cannot fly with bear spray. So you ha we'll have to pick that up when, once we arrive in Montana as well. All right, water filtration. I love the Katadyne Be Free water filter. The only modification I have to this is that I pair it with a larger hydro pack bottle. It comes with the one liter hydro pack uh, bladder, but uh, I like bringing this two liter hydro pack. This filter fits on this lid just, just the same. And this way, it's just a little bit quicker and easier that like you're, if you're filling up multiple liters of water, you could just, you could just scoop up two liters of water at a time, you know, bending down, getting in the river or whatever fill this whole thing up and filter both of your waters through the same bag and you don't have to you know, do it twice. Also, it gives you just a little bit more capacity for carrying more water. If you're gonna have a long stretch where you're not gonna be able to filter water, you could load up both your water bottles, load, fill this up to put this cap on and you've got four liters of water, which should get you through any day you're gonna be traveling through. All right, here's my ditty bag. There's a lot of odds and ends in here, so let's go through this. Oh, you already saw one of them. It's my mini Bic lighter, big fan of these. Usually I will bring a backup, but uh, meaning like some matches or something like that. But in this case, we've got three of us on this trip. And so we're all each other's backup. So each of us is bringing one ignition source. And that way we've got plenty of backups between the three of us. Same thing, check with your buddies, make sure that you are covered so that you don't have to be bringing 
backups and duplicates of everything on your own when there's things that you can share amongst the group. Here's my first aid kit. Uh, I won't go into this in detail, but I will just say, take the time to open up your first aid kit and go through it and pick and choose what you think you might need. If nothing else, you'll familiarize yourself with what you do have because sometimes there's surprising things in here where you wouldn't have realized that there's something in there that you could use like um, lip cream or chafe cream or something like that uh, that could come in very handy and make your trip more enjoyable and you didn't even know you were carrying it. So definitely recommend going through it, putting the things in you want, taking the things you don't want out. And you may think this is a small first aid kit for a five day backpacking trip, and it is. But again, with my buddies, we talked about it and we figured out amongst the three of us who's carrying what. And one of the other guys has a much more robust first aid kit that he's gonna be bringing. So that way each of us have our own little light kit just in case, but uh, if there were a more major medical emergency, we've got what we need in, in his first aid kit. I like this little uh, fork spoon knife from Ozark Trails. I prefer this over the long handled titanium spoon. That thing seems to get in the way. Just as ultra light and handy. One backup I am bringing is a little flashlight. This is a little mini flashlight from Amazon. Link in the description below. This is yeah, under an ounce and that way if I do lose my flashlight or it dies, I do have a backup and not, I'm not relying on one of my buddy's flashlights, obviously. It's a single LED flashlight, super handy and lightweight. Great hack that I love on backpacking trips is to buy Colgate Wisps. And if you've never seen these before, I'll put the link below, but these are single use toothbrushes that you don't need water for. It's about the same weight. So for this trip, you know, I'm bringing, I think 10 of these, got one for each morning and night. So it's about the same weight as a toothbrush and, and a bottle of toothpaste. But uh, in this case, I find that I have better hygiene when I have these than I do with the toothpaste and toothbrush, honestly. Like uh, when stuff's packed away for the night or whatever, or it's dark, you don't really find yourself wanting to go and get your water and do the whole toothbrushing thing. This is just super easy to make sure that you get some hygiene in before you go to bed and right when you wake up. So just quicker and easier and more convenient. So definitely pick some of these up. A uh, little mini bottle of camp soap, always handy. I put it in a Ziploc bag to make sure it doesn't leak, but um, don't bring a whole huge bottle. I definitely recommend um, only bringing a small amount. This stuff goes a long way and you don't need very much. So. Uh, it comes in handy for cleaning pots or bathing in the creek or something like that. Biodegradable and environmentally friendly. I've got a mosquito head neck, uh, mostly just in case. Virtually doesn't weigh anything and, you know, if you need it, you're definitely going to want it. Uh, speaking of bugs, I like to bring these little individual packets of picaridin, pic picardin, picaridin. Uh, individual repellent packets. Uh, you just tear these off and then you know that this is enough for you for a whole day. It's 14 hours, so you know exactly how much you need. You can bring one of these per day and you know you'll be covered instead of bringing like a whole bottle of bug spray. You know, you'd be good to go with these. And I have found these to become, be very effective uh, against mosquitoes. All right, I got my Govee home thermometer, very handy Bluetooth connection. Just like to see how cold it gets at night and it's just kind of a fun thing to have. I bring a stick of sunscreen to be able to put on my nose, maybe my neck, the tops of my hands. I'm not a big uh, sunscreen heavy user so I don't like having lots of lotion and whatnot on my arms and shoulders and stuff when I'm hiking. I usually like to just wear a sun shirt if I need it um, or just soak up the vitamin D. But on those days when you're gonna be very exposed and there's, it, the sun's beating down on you, it's nice to have something. And I think the sun stick is the way to go versus the sunscreen lotion. It's called the V seat from Climate. They practically give these things away. They have like deals all the time where they're giving away free V seats. We'll see how much it weighs, but this thing has just been super handy. I do bring a chair, which I'll get to in a minute, but sometimes you don't wanna get the whole chair out and set it up or whatever, and you're just taking a break. It's two ounces. So nice to have a little inflatable seat if you need it. But I personally like this because not only is it double as a seat, but it also is a knee pillow for me. I'm typically a side sleeper. And with my long legs, I like to have a little cushion in between my knees. So this thing works perfect for that. Always bring an emergency blanket. I definitely recommend having one of those per person in the party. Do have an emergency poncho as well, less than two ounces. 
if you are having major problems with rain and getting gear soaked and whatnot, these things can be a lifesaver, literally. I also bring a additional trash bag. I just, I flatten it up in a Ziploc bag so it's nice and compact and doesn't get in the way, but I like to bring an extra trash bag for one in case the one where I'm putting all my wet, I mean, I'm trying to keep my kit dry. If that tears, I have an extra, but also if you find trash in the backcountry, pack it out. This is what this is for. So bring a trash bag and then if you see something, don't just leave it there. Grab your trash bag, pack it out, make it better for the next person. Uh, I like this little REI sham towel. Uh, this thing is handy just to, you know, dry off if you got, you know, jumped in the river or lake or something like that. Also helps for cleaning things up. In addition to my first aid kit, I've got my Advil. <laughs> you never know when you're gonna need it. Basically, I bring four per day. So in case I'm really hurting, I could take up to four a day. Typically don't even need it, but you know, it's uh, some peace of mind to have that. This may be a new one for you. I don't know if you can guess what this is, but this is just a little piece of fun. Right in here, I got a pop-up Frisbee. This thing is fun, just super, super lightweight. Uh, what is it, less than an ounce? Yeah, barely registers, 0.2 and uh, gives you a little bit of something to have fun with when you're sitting around camp. You know, you can make target practice or, you know, throw it to each other and whatnot. All right, that does it for the toiletry kit. Right here, this is my food bag and this might look pretty big and heavy and it is. I'm going for five days, people, and I am not a small man, so I need my food. So the rule of thumb I follow is try to keep it under two pounds of food per day. I am a perennial overpacker when it comes to food. That's my biggest fear is like going hungry or not having enough food um, when I'm in the backcountry. And so I do tend to overpack on food. So I have to tell myself, keep it, keep it under control. But um, the nice thing about this is that it gets lighter every day. So eat the heaviest stuff first. And by the end, you know, your pack, your pack is gonna be much, much lighter. This is close to 10 pounds of food that I'm gonna be bringing. And, um, but it will, it'll quickly diminish over the first couple days because there's a couple heavier items that I'm bringing like a, a salami, things like that, that I'll have gone in the first day and a half or so. Oh, and uh, since we're going to Glacier National Park, uh, this is my bear bag. So I'm not bringing the earth sack. We don't need to carry bear canisters. It's not required. Uh, in Glacier, they have infrastructure at all the backcountry campsites that is either a bear locker or a bear pole where you can hang stuff. So all you have to do is bring a bear bag that you can then tie to a piece of cord, throw it over the pole, and you're good to go. You don't need the earth sack or anything like that, which is kind of nice. All right, I mentioned my chair. This year, I finally upgraded to the Helinox Chair Zero. So I also have the REI FlexLite Air, uh, but I, I did another video where I compare those. If you want to check that out, I'll put the link up there. But the Chair Zero One Out in my mind is slightly lighter and more comfortable, even though it is a little bit more expensive. I'm gonna bring in that with me. And here's my pillow and my pillow situation. I have the Cedar Summit Eros Down Large Pillow. Um, and the links for all of these things are in the description if you want to check it out. But this is an inflatable pillow that has a down top on it. I like this one because again, I'm a side sleeper. And what I end up actually doing is taking my buff and I will wrap it around the inflatable pillow, kind of like a pillowcase. And then I'll take my down jacket and I'll stuff it into the buff. And that way it gives me an extra layer of down, a little bit more loft, so that when I'm sleeping on my side, my neck isn't going so far sideways. It seems to be working pretty well so far. Speaking of clothes, I have for my down jacket, I am taking this REI 650 down jacket, which pretty excited about this. I got this on sale for $50. So watch the sales at REI. Right now there's some good sales happening. Uh, there's the Labor Day sale, first of all, but these uh, often go on sale just because they have new colors every season. So this one, this color is being retired, I guess. And normally $120 on these, I think. And I got this for $50. And that, that price can't really beat this. This is gonna be a good lightweight uh, down jacket. 
I don't quite need my heavy full full down jacket to take on this trip because it's not gonna be that cold and this should this should do the job just fine. And my other jacket here is an REI brand uh, rain jacket that just folds right up into this nice little pouch. Keeps it easy to pack. The pouch is actually built into the jacket and it becomes an inside pocket when you have the jacket unpacked. Seven and a half ounces on this thing. And this thing has served me really well. Like I said, I've got my buff. I'll be hiking in this Terramar t-shirt. Uh, this thing is got, it's an amazing material and I'm not sure exactly what it is. I'll try to put it on the screen, but uh, this is a new shirt I've been trying out this season and I've been very happy with this. It's super lightweight and it wicks and it dries amazingly quick. So super comfortable, comfortable to hike in. And that's gonna be my main hiking shirt. And then I also have a sun shirt. This is a just a, a sun UPF shirt from Columbia that is a, a V-neck zipper. That way, this also works as like a mid-layer if it is a little bit chillier, uh, but also is a sunblock. I've got my rain pants. These are the REI rain pants. Again, uh, got a lot of REI stuff, but man, they've got good stuff. This stuff, these are some of the lightest rain pants that I find. I have found short of the frog togs. Frog togs or fog dogs? Fog dogs. Uh, but these things are much more sturdy than the frog dogs. Let's see here. Seven and a half ounces on these things. And they're definitely much more durable than the frog dogs. And then I don't have them here, but I've got my REI brand again. I'm not sponsored by REI, but <laughs> I do love their stuff. I've got the REI, I think they're called trail made pants that are my hiking pants that I'll be bringing. Uh, I'll link them below. Super lightweight, but yet a little bit more durable than some of those like lightweight jogging pants. And then I like bringing a, a pair of shorts and I bring these little running shorts that have the, the liner built into them. So I do bring two pairs of underwear, two pairs of socks, one to wear and an extra. So you could wash one or whatever if you need to. But these are nice because it does have the liner. So, you know, kind of keeps you nice and cool and kind of serves as an extra, extra pair of underwear with you know basically no no penalty on weight all right and uh last but not least i got my hiking poles uh i've got the rei traverse hiking poles again these are great budget poles i think that's the theme with this rei brand equipment is that they've got really solid mid price items and so this one is the rei traverse these are pretty lightweight let's see here for the price got 10 ounces for one of them 20 ounces for the pair and I love having these little these little flip locks here because this is super easy to extend or change. I hated having the kind that twisted to lock because I always had problems with them. They wouldn't lock or I couldn't get them open or whatever. These have been great because there's no issue whatsoever. Super solid and easy to, you know, on the move, you can make an adjustment while you're hiking, make, you know, lengthen them or shorten them or whatever you need to do. And you've got all cork, natural cork handle, with the extended foam at the bottom. So been super happy with these. And that's it, that's everything I'm bringing with me. And so total weight, that all comes in uh, right around 32 pounds. I am also bringing about three pounds of camera gear with a microphone and a GoPro equipment and some battery backups uh, for that. So uh, I will be bringing those as well. And I'll link those in the description below. Oh, I'm also wearing my Garmin Forerunner 950. I uh, love this thing and it's actually really great for hiking because it has a feature where you just tell it you're hiking and it links into the map system. You can find what trail you're on and it can tell you where the next landmark is, where the next water crossing, where the next uh, trail branch is. And it'll actually tell you how far away you are, not as the crow flies, but how far you have to go on the trail you're on. So pretty cool feature. This is the solar version of the forerunner and so i'm hoping that for the five days i won't have to charge this i'll charge it up and try to be conscious about putting it in the sun when i'm stopping for lunch and stuff like that so we'll see if i can make it last the whole time but i'll, I'll report back and let you know let me know what questions you have put them down in the comments um, let me know if you have uh, done anything different for a trip this long and uh, let me know what i'm what i'm forgetting seriously let me know so i don't forget Hope this was helpful. If it was, hit the like button. And if you want to see how the trip goes, uh, don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to be posting a full trip report after we get back. So don't forget to check that out. Thanks for watching.